Let's speak about electrochemistry, but before we do, I need to remind you about redox reactions because redox reactions forms the basis of electrochemistry. And if you don't understand that, you're not going to understand the galvanic and the electrolytic cells. So first of all, electrochemistry refers to reactions where we either convert chemical energy into electrical energy, or we do the opposite, where we convert electrical energy into chemical energy. And this process, this conversion of energy, takes place through using redox reactions. And I hope you remember that redox stands for reduction and oxidation. And using the acronym OIL RIG, that's what I use, OIL RIG, we know that oxidation is loss of electrons. That is where the OIL comes from. Oxidation is loss of electrons and therefore reduction is gain. Reduction is gain of electrons. These two half reactions, so oxidation half reaction and reduction half reaction, when I add them together, they produce the overall or net redox reaction. It's also very important to note that the substance that is reduced, remember, oil rig, the substance that is reduced is the substance that is gaining electrons. We also call this substance the oxidizing agent. And the substance that is oxidized, in other words, the substance that is losing electrons, oxidation is loss of electrons, that is also called the reducing agent. So if you are reduced, you're the oxidizing agent. If you're oxidized, you are the reducing agent. I like to think of it as opposites. And it's important to note that oxidation and reduction take place at the same time. And they are both half reactions and together they form the full complete reaction. Some other things to note about oxidation and reduction. A real life example of a redox reaction is rusting. So oxygen takes electrons from iron to form iron oxide. And we call that rust, iron oxide. So here's a little table summarizing oxidation versus reduction. And it's very, very important also just to note that the oxidation number of a compound increases when oxidation occurs and the oxidation number of a compound decreases when reduction occurs. I will go over why and how this is the case in a second. But if I have to give you these two reactions over here, number one and number two, and I ask you which is the oxidation half reaction and which is the reduction half reaction, I hope that just by looking at it, you can tell me which one is oxidation and which one is showing reduction. And how would we do that? Let's take a look at number one. Number one, there's various ways to do it. The one way is to look at oxidation numbers. So if you look at Fe2+, plus, and then it becomes Fe3+, plus, plus an electron, the oxidation number of Fe2+, plus, it's the charge over here, is plus 2. The oxidation number of Fe3+, plus is plus 3. So what happened to the oxidation number? It increased. And an increase in oxidation number means that oxidation has occurred. So what that means is that the Fe2 plus ion has been oxidized. It also makes sense because we can see that the Fe2 plus, this, has lost an electron. So when I teach this, I always tell my students that if your electrons are on the right-hand side of the equation, you have lost them. They are gone. They are no longer a part of you. You see it goes Fe2 plus, then an arrow, and then Fe3 plus plus electrons. These have been given away. It's been lost. Oxidation is loss. Another way that it makes sense is because this had a charge of plus 2, and now it's becoming plus 3. So do you agree that it's becoming more positive. And how do you become more positive? To become more positive, you need to get rid of the negative things. So if you give away an electron, oxidation is lost. If you lose a negative, an electron, you become more positive. So reaction one is the oxidation half reaction. Therefore, reaction two is the reduction half reaction. Let's take a closer look. So looking at reaction two, I can see Ce4 plus plus an electron becomes Ce3+. plus. Now, first off, if we look at oxidation numbers, the oxidation number of Ce is plus 4. The oxidation number of Ce3+, plus is plus 3. What happened to the oxidation number? It decreased. And a decrease in oxidation number means that reduction has occurred. Another way to think about it is that this substance is becoming less positive. It's becoming more negative, if you will. So if we go from plus four to plus three, you see we are getting less positive, okay? Plus four is more positive than plus three. And why are we getting less positive? Because we are gaining a negative. So if you gain a negative, you become less positive. And when you gain this electron, therefore you are being reduced. So Ce4 plus 
is being reduced. In other words, CE4 plus is the oxidizing agent. It is gaining these electrons and the electrons are on the left hand side of the equation, which makes sense. This thing is gaining this electron. So very, very important to consult your exam guidelines and study your definition. So oil rig, oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain. You also need to be able to define oxidation and reduction in terms of oxidation numbers. So oxidation is an increase in oxidation numbers and reduction is a decrease in oxidation numbers. You also need to be able to define an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent. Another important thing that you need to be able to do is to use the table of standard reduction potentials. And we're going to be looking at this table a lot in this playlist. But for this video, I just want to focus on the half reactions and how they can either be representing oxidation or reduction. So what do I mean? If we take a look at the first reaction on the table, and just by the way, in your final paper, you may be given table 4A and table 4B. They are almost the same. The entries, so these half reactions, are just written in the reverse order in table 4A versus table 4B. So you basically flip the table and you get table 4A. I focus on table 4B. A lot of schools focus on using table 4B. So that's what I will be speaking about in my videos. So if I take a look at the first half reaction on the table, lithium ion plus an electron gives me lithium. Do you see how the half reactions are written on the table with a double arrow? Now, the reason it is written like that is because I can choose, or not I can choose, but this half reaction can either be written like this. So it can either be written what we call from left to right. So how that would look is you would write it something like this. Lithium plus the electron. Lithium ion plus the electron gives me lithium. That would mean if I write the um, reaction like this, I'm writing the reaction from left to right. So I'm writing the stuff on the left first, then I'm drawing an arrow, and then I'm writing the stuff on the right-hand side. Or I can take that same reaction and I can reverse it. So what do I mean by that? I first start with the stuff on the right-hand side, then I draw an arrow, and then I write the stuff on the left-hand side. Okay? Do you now see, I hope you can now see, that it's the same reaction, just written in the reverse order. One of these represents an oxidation half reaction. The other represents a reduction half reaction. I hope that you can see when I write it like I did here, the first version that I wrote it, that represents reduction. So the Li+, plus, the lithium ions, are gaining an electron to form lithium. My oxidation numbers went from plus one to zero. Remember when an element is standing by itself, its oxidation number is zero, like this. So the oxidation number decreased. My lithium, it went from a positive to less positive. So it gained an electron, it became more negative. Reduction has occurred. Li plus has accepted an electron. Reduction is gain of electrons. Whereas if I write it the other way around, so if I write it from right to left, this half reaction represents what we call an oxidation half reaction. In this case, case, lithium was oxidized. Lithium lost an electron to form the lithium ion. So very, very important. When we write our reactions from left to right, you are writing what we call a reduction half reaction. If we write our reactions from right to left, Using the table, we are writing down what we call an oxidation half reaction. What I want you to take note of right off the bat is that the half reactions are listed with double arrows in the table. But when you write down an oxidation half reaction or reduction half reaction, we always write them down with single arrows. You never use double arrows when you write an oxidation or reduction half reaction. If this didn't make too much sense to you, don't worry. We're going to revisit this table in videos to come inside this playlist. I just wanted to be clear on the fact that we can get oxidation and reduction half reactions from the table. And depending on which way we write it, it will either be what we consider to be an oxidation half reaction or a reduction half reaction. And as you can see coming up in the playlist later on, we'll be speaking about oxidation half reactions and reduction half reactions and how that results in either a chemical to electrical change or an electrical to a chemical change, such as in this electrolytic cell over here, but it's all based on redox reactions. 
I hope that that brief reminder was helpful. In the next video, I'm going to introduce you to the galvanic cell versus the electrolytic cell. I'll see you then. Bye, everybody.